Hey man, this is Kevin Smith and you're listening to the Comic Com, man. This is where you get all your comics info and take that from a comics guy, a comic book man. From across the comic book community multiverse, the Comic Com podcast begins now with your hosts, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime. If you give them the title of influencer, then that's that's giving them more power, right? That's how it is. Like, I'm a nobody. Listen, I'm a nobody. Zach, a.k.a. The Manimal. We talked about it for a full, I believe, seven to eight minutes on an hour-long normal podcast for a show. And you would have thought we set their house on fire with the backlash. So, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Season 3, Episode 30. This is Milton the Manimal, Nemesis Prime. We're live from SDCC again, two weeks in a row. We told you last week we were live from SDCC. We're still there partying, hanging out, doing all the shit. Justin, what's up? Can you hear anything in the background? Uh, no, there's actually nothing going on because there's no actors or actresses promoting any type of movie. There is no trailers to talk of. It's just comic books. It's what we all wanted for many, many years at San Diego Comic-Con. I know. You know, what's weird about that is like, we we're talking about, Hey, what should we going to talk about for San Diego Comic-Con? And it's like, well, there's not a lot. And the truth of the matter is like, I actually enjoy the comic book information that drops mostly, but you know, usually, but at SDCC and like NYCC, the big ones, it's always been the movie stuff that seems to take precedent. No Hall, and now no it's Marvel, feels, no DC, no anything. Yeah, and it feels weird now, honestly, that we don't have anything. So anyway, we will get into that. We are recording this Wednesday the 26th. So we're recording it a little early because Justin, like the bad friend that he is, is going to Terrificon without me here tomorrow. Good morning, Terrificon. Uh, I can't I can't actually tell you how much like hatred and jealousy I have in my heart right now to miss out on it. It was so much fun last year, but Anyway, we are recording and uh, we're going to get into some stuff. We have some community stuff. We've got some SDCC news. We've got some movie TV news, you know, the usual stuff. But we are going to kick it off with a community question. And Justin is going to tell us what it is. Justin? Yeah. So it's not really so much of a question, but more of like a follow up. And, you know, I'm sure some people, you know, after one week of talking about one topic and then the next week kind of being like, okay about it when we spoke with very gary about this you know people might have been like oh you know are you treating this subject a little differently because you know you're friends with gary so i'm not going to call out the community member because i don't want you know throwing hate on people that don't need to get thrown hate on but no hate at all to this community you know who you are and like we respect you and you're a boy so like yeah honestly i kind of i appreciate the question yeah no it's definitely you know he's someone that you know hit us up so um he goes hey justin just listen to the very gary podcast and i have to call you guys out on something and that's cool that people actually are calling us out i like that (laughs) um not a fight at all because you know you know i love you guys but gary said he was destroying a thousand copies of his book to make his book more rare isn't that just like bryce comics i know it's not a one of one but it's really the same thing isn't it i was hoping you guys would call <laughs> would call him out because you shoot straight appreciate the question appreciate the comment and the message and you know uh, this person and i we kind of went back and forth and it is you know it is kind of true i know you know we talked about manufacturing variants oh, right collectibles right yeah we definitely yeah. We, we talked about this whether you take you know, again, it could be a toy, it could be a video game, uh, but variants in particular, obviously, because this is comic books. So, you know, Gary taking a book that has like a 2000 print run or a 3000 print run and dropping and basically smashing a thousand copies just to make it limited has been done before. You know, this is not anything new because, you know, books like uh, the Star Wars High Republic one from Comic Book Invest, you've got people like Comic Man, KRS, you know, all these guys, they You've seen them. They'll say only limited to 600 copies or only limited to 500 copies. And it's not true because there's definitely more than that that were published. They probably one. They There's two reasons. There is one reason to do this is because maybe if there's a thousand copies they have and they only sell 500, there's wiggle room if some are damaged. Right. So okay. then they'll say, all right, well, yeah, we'll, we'll take the 500 best copies and destroy the 500 worst copies. So, yes, you are limiting in that in that aspect. And, you know, uh, I guess people do want to try to make it rare, but, you know, we were kind of blowing up on Bry and, and, you know, he still hasn't reached out to us. And and even he's posted, uh, you know, something recently as well about another book that he had uh, did a variant for, which is actually an older variant from a 2004, 2005 Gabriel Delato, like international book that he's now, you know, plumbing off on his own saying it's rare and it's all showing, you know, dollar amounts. And 
you know, it, it's just it's weird as far as the variants <clears throat> go, right? We're not saying that, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm okay with you know some people destroying some copies for that reason, maybe to making it a little bit rare. But you know, the thing with the thing with Bry was he took a thousand copies and made it down to one. You know, that's a little bit strange. You know, that's a little bit doing it dirty, right? To the to the comic book community. Um, you know, maybe you want to I think he'd limited some other Gabriel, whatever the Gabriel Delato that he was doing also was like limited to 20. Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I just don't see. And then of course, you know, like international comics posted that you can go ahead and buy the foreign version for like five or 10 bucks plus shipping. So just go buy that. It's not really rare then. Right. It's yeah. not like we're taking our variant and I'm destroying all of the variants and keeping a few. Um, yeah. I, I get what the question, the questioner questioner is trying mm -hmm. to say. And, question -y. and to, to be honest, I mean, we're the question is, I believe. Oh and yeah. So, and to be honest, like, I think I kind of, um, look, I don't, I don't really mess with the variant game. I don't know it. And I didn't really understand it either with Bryce when, when you were kind of saying it, like that's what he did. And, and I do think there is a difference between destroying all but one copy and then destroying 1000 of 2000 or whatever Gary said um, it was, there's a difference there, but in the, the, the principle is kind of the same, I guess, but like, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to be honest. I'm just happy that I don't buy into that kind of stuff. Like, you know, I'm, I'm never going to buy a one of one. I don't give two shits about that. And so, and a lot of the variant game is not really my game anyway, but um, I would say if I'm playing honest, yes, I think we were probably, we, we could have said something to Gary, but because Gary's our friend, we, we put it a little safe there. Right. And didn't, and didn't say anything. And I do remember when he said it, I was kind of like, wait, didn't we, I actually kind of had forgotten about the prize comics thing. And I was like, <laughs> didn't we kind of just talk about something like this? This doesn't seem right. But like, look, man, at the end of the day, business is business. Like if you want to do your business one way, you know, some people are going to agree. Some people are going to disagree. Um, but yeah, I guess we can be held accountable for somewhat uh, catering to friendship here a little bit, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little different and a little the same. So I guess I get it. I think we also were running a lot of time, right? We were, cause that show, Oh, like, we, were, we were we were talking about so much we could have kept going, you know. So yeah. I think we, yeah, we didn't extend, but yeah, we would have literally never gotten to any articles. I would have never did my whatnot show that night, and we would have just been playing forever because we were still talking post show, like most most people do on these podcasts, like when we have uh, people on. So damn you, Gary, for putting us in the hot seat. Exactly, damn you, questioner, for sending <laughs> us that question, for calling us out. No, like yeah. to be honest, like look. We call so many people out. So if we deserve it to be called out, we deserve to be called out. So yeah, we'll, take it, we'll take it on the chin if we deserve it, man. So follow it. up. And all love. All love. Yeah. I always like how things come back. Like we always, if we talk about articles and then like a month or two later, we have like a follow up to it because of something that, you know, whether we said or, or talked about, it's always nice to. That's, that's reality. Things change, yeah. right? Like what's, what happens one day is different later with more information and a different situation. And, you know, you got to be a little flexible, I mm -hmm. guess. And, I guess we've kind of learned our lesson here maybe a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just continue to do what we do, but <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, thank you community for your question. Feel free in the future, friends, haters, whatever. If you feel like you need to call us out, please do so. And we will not shy away from the tough questions as you know. So moving on, let's talk San Diego Comic-Con. So like we kind of said in the opener, you know, obviously this San Diego Comic-Con was a little different with the writers and actor strike and Marvel being gone, DC being gone, and not a lot of like TV movie news that we're accustomed to. And honestly, kind of feels like the COVID year, right? Where like everything mm -hmm. kind of shut down and we didn't have it. But we did get a lot of comic book news, which like you said, dude, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? At least I mean, that's what I'm most interested in. Um, and we had a lot of good stuff. And before we kind of get into this article, I want to kind of chug through some of the... Um, the things that were pretty highlighted, like that were kind of big at Comic-Con and obviously something we've talked about. And I know Justin's big on myself. I'm big on as well. And it would seem like it was the darling of San Diego Comic-Con was Skybound and Transformers and the Energon universe. So I really loved everything they did that we saw on like Instagram and their social media. They had a great setup. Uh, their ash cans flew. Um, the ash can for Transformers won. They had that variant with Jetfire for uh, Void Rivals 1 as well and hot, hot books. Everyone seemed really pumped. And then 
you sent me something just yesterday about like Joe, right? About GI yeah. Joe. So uh, coming in January or coming in December is the, the Duke number one. Yeah. Followed by Cobra Commander number one in January. <laughs> and the Duke has in the background, in the background, you have like basically Starscream flying. You see him in the background. And the Cobra Commander, which is really cool as well, has uh, you see kind of like the Ark for, for us G1 fans that know the Ark, like the ship that the Autobots came from. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of looks like it's kind of crashing into the ground um, with Cobra Commander in the front. So, yeah. Yeah, that is cool. And Joshua Williamson, we talked about this before when it got announced, Joshua Williamson doing both titles. They said that like we'll be getting an origin for Duke as well. I believe it's supposed to be something a little different than maybe what you're used to for Joe. Um, but yeah, Skybound, I, th I felt like really kind of did well there. Um, some other really pushing this Void Rivals. That's the oh, thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's good. You've been reading it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I read the first two. Yeah. So, yeah. First two. And it's good. I'm, I'm loving the story so far. Um, very interesting stuff. One of the other things that I really liked, and maybe it's I'm a little biased as well. Uh, Charles Soule had a big kind of gathering, and he was obviously pushing eight billion genies a lot. And you know, he's got the High Republic coming up as well, the Star Wars stuff that he's got coming here soon, and uh, Hell to Pay as well. I had a little fanboy situation on Instagram when he reposted or liked my picture with Hell to Pay stuff. So uh, I love Charles Soule. I know you're a big Charles Soule fan as mm -hmm. well, of course. So that was cool. Um, but no, I mean, titles that we've got. So here's some new Marvel comics. Every new Marvel comic confirmed at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. So we'll kind of breeze through some of these and then talk about them, the ones we're interested in. Um, we have first title is X-Men Blue Origins. So this is going to be kind of a group of one shots that I believe is going to be uh, by Cy Spurrier and Wilton Santos. They'll star Nightcrawler alongside his mother Mystique. And that's supposed to be like the first one. And I'm not sure if it's actually going to be ongoing, like Origins, X-Men Blue, and then just Origins 1, or like what's going to happen, but a one-shot dealing with Nightcrawler and Mystique. And uh, if you see the solicitations, you know, I think it's what Uncanny Spider-Man is coming out, where it's Nightcrawler as Spider-Man. So hmm. that's going to be an ongoing, like, five-issue title, which I'm pretty excited for, kind of cool thing. And then we've got, um, well, sorry, what do you, I mean, you're not a massive X-Men fan, but... No, I'm definitely not huge not definitely not this title but there are some titles that there are coming that i am interested cool in. so the next one we got is timeless we know that we've had uh the one shot timeless that's come out pretty much every year now and they've been kind of a big deal like they've had to really kind of like setting the tone for the marvel universe in a way and they've been a little bit more focused around kang um but this one seems to be a new one shot by colin kelly and uh sets up oncoming Timeless events, the upcoming one shot will feature a look at Marvel's future when it is finally released this December. So Timeless set in a dystopian world whose prideful superheroes failed in their prime directive to protect humanity. Power Man, the world's last living superhero who possesses the powers of the Hulk, Sentry, and Iron Fist will engage in an epic battle with the immortal Moon Knight, a mysterious entity that does the building of Khonshu. With an intriguing premise and mysterious new characters with familiar abilities, Timeless is one of the Marvel's most exciting upcoming comics. Have you seen the picture of Power Man with like the powers? Yeah, it kind of looks like century in a way almost. Yeah, and he's got and he's got the iron fist. It looks pretty cool. Um it's gonna be an interesting read for sure. Yeah. yeah. It definitely puts a lot of characters powers and you know who's more powerful than this character. Right. That, yeah. So he's gonna go up against them. Yeah, dude. And, and it's kind of like a an unusual pairing as well, like Power Man and Moon Knight. I mean, if you were to ask me, oh, who's the last two standing? I wouldn't have picked these two, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of cool. It's a little different than like your typical, or your, you know, your well-known characters. Um, next up, we got Deadpool seven slaughter. So this is a one shot coming from Rob Liefeld returning to seems to be the only character he can write anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not too excited about this. Like, I, you know, I, I've talked ad nauseum about Deadpool kind of just being a little too campy for me. But one of the things is this is supposed to be uh, Seven Slaughters is sure to be one of Deadpool's most violent comics yet. So, um, yeah, I don't know. There's supposed to be some other people writing. Mark Guggenheim, Colin Bunn, Gail Simone, Cody Ziegler, and Justina Ireland will all be kind of writing segments during this. So it looks like it's a bit of like an anthology book. So, yeah, and I think they have, you know, and obviously with with Capullo doing the art, I think I'm. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I do like the picture. I like the picture here, the, like the 
the front looks great. Capoo yeah, great. so we'll, we'll kind of see. Obviously, this has been something that we even talked. We touched about this right, like earlier this year. Like Capoo posted like a like a, just this quick sketch on his like Twitter or, or Instagram yeah. or something, and, and everybody was like freaking out. So yeah, he did a Wolverine one as well, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So him returning to kind of the X world. So next up is something we talked about last week: the Superior Spider Man. So. We're not going to delve into this too much because we kind of did ad nauseum a little bit last week, but obviously we got the return of Otto Octavius's Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man. We don't really know what the whole story is here, but it does look like it's just going to be a one shot. So not an ongoing, which I didn't know that. Did you know that? Uh, I think it's ongoing. That's uh, all did, did very you? on. Yeah, I think it's it's another ongoing. It's not a one shot. I think, think last week when we <laughs> when we talked about it, I think we only thought it was going to be a one shot, but it... it um it's going to be a one shot. It's called uh, oh, Superior Returns. Spider Man Returns. That's what I is, read. Yeah, yeah. Is the one shot, but yeah. then it'll be like Superior Spider Man okay. Volume Two or Volume Three because they've already done. So does Returns come out first? It's like a prequel yes. in a way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Probably setting the stage. Yeah, that's what I see right here. Upcoming Superior Spider Man Returns one shot. So, and Mark Bagley doing the art. I mean, that's kind of a home run right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially so. for Spider Man. So this one. I'm pretty excited about, and I've been going back and forth talking to, you know, both Black Crown and and Debucha on Instagram about this, but we have a new Punisher coming to the Marvel Universe in his very own ongoing series. So Moon Knight City of the Dead writer David Propose or Proposi, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, is set to helm a new Punisher series alongside artist David Wachter. New series set to release on November 8th. Punisher will introduce Joe Garrison as its eponymous anti-hero. So after Frank Castle's mysterious disappearance, Joe Garrison will step into his predecessor's shoes to ensure that criminals never feel free to walk the streets. Described by Propose as the Danny Ketch of the Punisher legacy, Joe Garrison is set to become the Marvel Universe's deadliest new hero as he strives to live up to the legacy of Frank Castle. What are your thoughts, man? Sounds awesome. Uh, right? Yeah, like you you saying it to be like the Danny Ketch? Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not a huge Ghost Rider, but when I first read Ghost Rider, I read Danny Ketch stuff. And, the 90s stuff right yeah yeah and it was amazing and like he was you know we always talk about when you first started collecting or you first saw certain heroes or villains like who was your first like green lantern who was your first flash who was your <laughs> first punisher and obviously this is like a big first ghost rider like obviously boom it's like now we have a new ghost we have a new punisher and you're saying Ooh. it's kind of like danny catch okay i'm perfect you know and it's not you know what we talked about previously like uh you know they were talking about recreating punisher as like a, a black character to be right part of like a war effort and whoever this person is you know this is awesome i mean yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, to see this series and read it so what about you man i know you're a- oh i'm super pumped man i mean i was worried i was obviously worried for multiple reasons kind of what you said is i thought we were gonna get like some kind of social justice, like version of the character to check a box. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. who knows? We just don't know a lot about this character and maybe it ends up being something like that. Or my other even worse fear than that was that it was going to be like war machine takes over the Punisher mantle or like an established character becomes the Punisher, which I'm just completely not interested in. So I Miles love Morales. This. Yeah. I mean, I, right. To be honest, I could have, it, it could have been miles. Um, I'm excited that it's an all new character. Um, I'm excited too, that they're not giving up on the Punisher. Cause obviously there's been a lot of controversy around the Punisher the past couple of years. Um, even the symbol, I don't know. It looks like they're still not going back to the original symbol. And that might be like a Marvel thing moving forward. Like we never may see the original Punisher symbol until a really it's long time. Kind of like it kind of is. It looks more like a pumpkin in a way. <laughs> like yeah. A but lantern, I, right? Yeah. It's, it's either kind of giving like uh, the breastplates and then yeah. the middle of the, the sternum is like the nose and then like his right. stomach is the teeth. Like, yeah. I get it. It's still- it looks like it, but yeah. So I don't know. I'm excited about this. I'll definitely be picking this up for sure. So next one up, time to kill and first contact. So kind of like I said earlier, uh, we got an, in addition to his new Deadpool one shot. Rob Liefeld is set to return for two new ongoing series, both announced at San Diego Comic-Con. Liefeld will helm Time to Kill and First Contact, two new series which will debut in 2024. Marvel didn't reveal any details regarding the plot of either series, but did release concept art for both. Judging by the promos, Time to Kill will feature Liefeld's already iconic new character, Major X, for a brand new adventure. 
Meanwhile, First Contact will star Cable alongside the original X-Men team, each of whom sports their first suit. So, I mean, look, give it to Liefeld, I guess. Lean into what you have. And he's like, you know, all Deadpool, all Major X, all Cable. Mm -hmm. And that's really all he ever does anymore. So, um, I'm an X-Men fan, but to be honest, I'm not really like the Major X kind of sucked. And this doesn't feel like this is going to be continuity to me, like canon. So I, I don't know. I don't read like Batter Blood or any of that stuff. Like I don't read any of his, you know, offshoot stuff really. Yeah, I couldn't care less about this title. I completely forgot about the character until they announced it. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. I really did for me. The I... son of Cable and Storm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, now the next one, new X-Men. So there was all we got was a title screen. Who are the new X-Men? And if you are an X-Men fan, you should have been excited maybe just based on the, uh, the, um, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The font. Yeah. The font that we got mm. is very, it's age of apocalypse. This is what the age of apocalypse font was with X-Men. But so they say after the tragic events of Marvel's recent fall of X crossover, fans were teased with the return of the X-Men at San Diego comic-con staying true to character. Marvel was extremely tight lipped regarding the future of the X-Men merely asking fans a simple question, who are the new X-Men, while suggesting that more news will come in November. So Marvel didn't outright confirm a new X-Men series at Comic-Con. They did seem to hint at such a possibility. Acknowledging the fall of Krakoa, Marvel suggests that a new lineup of X-Men may be coming, and given the familiar font of its announcement, the new X-Group may have ties to Apocalypse. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like X-Men's going away, bro, right? Yeah. So, super cool stuff there. Next up, we got Daredevil Black Armor. What do you think? This about is this? interesting. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely interesting for for the Black Armor. Obviously, we just we the final issue of you know Daredevil in the Chip Zdarsky stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, this mini series is, is pretty awesome. Um, from what it reads, it's you know as the name suggests, Daredevil Black Armor will feature the return of the hero's black suit, which proved heavily controversy controversial when it debuted in the '90s. Uh, the series offers the opportunity for Marvel to redeem Daredevil's often hated black armor which may land better with readers than it did in his uh chichester original run neither less the heavier themes associated with daredevil's black armor could signify a dark turn into the superhero's future so do you i'm not like familiar it. i'm not familiar why i got so much hate do you yeah i guess because that was the whole shadowland stuff right well that was way after... before that way before that oh so then well then what it wasn't the fall it from grace shadowland. yeah was it the fall is it the fall from grace costume no so what was the one after that? Just the black costume was fine. Like, I didn't think I feel like more people. And this is like me growing up in the 90s. were giving shit when he had that costume. Which the was armor like, one. The one that was like, yeah, it was like purple and red. And that one, I felt like I was like, this, this isn't Daredevil. But I feel like the black suit was cool. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool looking. I, but I think it's the, the, you know, like the the one I'm picturing in my mind is like the 90s uh, with like it was more like armor as well. Mm -hmm. It was definitely 90 esque. Um, like shoulder pads and stuff. He kind of looked like a, I don't know, like a security guard in a way, but um, I don't know. This, this is cool. I'm, I'm big on daredevil. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm just kind of Googling. Oh yeah. I could see where they're going. Like, well, no, I think the night. So the nineties one is the, like that version I feel like was the, the, <clears throat> the fall from grace costume. But then there's another one where it's, yeah, it's just like a black suit and it just has the D, the, the D and the D on it. So I don't oh, understand yeah, like yeah. why, like that's the one that has the shoulder pads. The um, fall from grace is definitely the one that has the shoulder pads. I don't know what they're talking about saying this black costume was bad to be honest. Like, yeah, it wasn't really know. that bad at all. I mean, you know, we've had some crazy stuff from, uh, from that armored costume and then him going with the, I mean, I would, to me honest, there, there was some really shitty costumes in the early <laughs> The nineties went a little wild with some of the costumes, right? Yeah. So that's why it's weird because like I, I, real quick, I'm kind of looking at the daredevil's coolest costumes and they go through them and the, the black suit really is the whole Andy Diggle run during Shadowland. So unless they're really bringing back the fall from grace costume, like, I don't know. It's yeah, weird. this one looks, this one looks more like the Shadowland costume for sure. Yes. Um, but, but I don't anyway. know. I, I'm also kind of concerned or not concerned. I wonder if it's, what I always wonder is, is this going to be canon or is this like a mini series kind of set on its own? Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't really say in this article. So yeah. you want to take the next one? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, good old Marvel superheroes, secret wars, battle world. So we are currently having the secret 
ultimate invasion story arc going on, obviously. But this is going to be taken from the 1984 never seen never before seen adventure set during the original crossover event of secret wars jim shooter returns alongside mike zek and bob layton for marvel superheroes secret wars battle world a new miniseries set to release in its first issue in november so the new battle world miniseries promises to expose hidden truth about marvel's major crossover event including what the beyonder beyonders were planning all along although marvel is keeping the details of the event very secret and hopefully will have fan longtime fans intrigued. Hmm. It's gonna be cool. I think seeing different sides and what uh, what was happening at different times is always interesting. Right? Yeah. I just I, I really hate it when they try to go back and like this is like what happened with like original sin, you know what I mean? With uh Nick mm. Fury when they went back and they're like, hey, these are all the secrets of the Marvel universe that are now changed. And so it's like as a long-term fan, you know what's funny is I think back to like our interview with Eric July. And he talked about this kind of stuff. Like, this is what the big two do all the time, where they kind of screw over. And I, I kind of, I'm getting it now a little bit more is you're a lifetime fan. You have this story in your mind, and this is what you've been. And then Marvel just can't come up with necessarily new ideas. They're like, well, you know what? We'll go back and, and change that and make it like a little different now. And so it's kind of like rewriting your own history in a way. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe it won't be. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'll probably read it. I guess just to kind of know what's going on, but I'm not super excited for it. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be interesting because I like seeing some comics that, that kind of do that obviously from different point of views. Yeah. But as long as the problem is, and I don't know if this is true, but you know, are we going to see the, all the original characters that were in that secret wars? Are they going to throw in like ultimate characters or like, you know, like who else are we going to get that wasn't there that, we need to know like what was going on. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. it was set in the eighties. So like you need to only have those characters. Like you can't have anybody new or you can't be like, well, let's throw in miles. Yeah. Because... No, I think, I think they're going to stick to the 1984 series and Jim shooter being back. I think the artwork here is just a little misleading. Cause it's from the Hickman. Yeah. Stuff. The ultimate. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's a little interesting, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So this next one, God damn. I feel like I talk about this all the time, how they Marvel always tries to bring back Howard the duck. So Mm. upcoming one shot, Howard, the duck um, will feature a down on his luck. Howard, who was approached by an otherworldly being that offers an opportunity to see all the different ways that his life could have gone better. So it's like a Howard, the duck. What if I'm not really interested in this, but to be honest though, like it does have Chuck Zdarsky. And he's probably one of the best writers right now. And so hmm. if anything, I, maybe I'd pick it up to kind of see what Chuck can do with Howard the Duck. The one like, shot, like, I guess. Like, yeah, I couldn't be less interested. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm never a big Howard the Duck fan. Like you said, they always try to, you know, bring him back somehow. And I feel like the only series that sold well was with Gwen Poole. Like, that was really it. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. But last but not least, uh, number... Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Gang War. We have a new kind of a shitty title, right? <laughs> Marvel's <laughs> next big thing. Uh, Amazing Spider Man number 37. Um, and this is going to be starting in November. Is going to be tons of the crime lords. You got Kingpin, Hammerhead, Mr. Negative, the Owl, Hobgoblin, and many more. Uh, Gang War will force the street level heroes of Marvel Universe to go into great lengths to save New York. They all live in New York is what it is but anyway it's uh being published titles of course between the amazing spider-man and then there is the one shot for that and then three mini series because of course you can't have it without mini series right. uh luke cage's gang war spider woman and deadly hands of kung fu gang war so mm-hmm. you know it's like here's i'm moderately interested because i do like street level characters i love it and it's funny because you you brought up Shadowland, and that's one of like the biggest and best, in my opinion, like street level crossover storylines, right? And I think we're both pretty big fans of Shadowland. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do like some of these villains, you know. I mean, they're all Spider Man villains, but they're all kind of like, I don't know. It could be cool. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't really. It's just think Marvel that. crossovers. It's kind of like a fatigue a little bit, and like PTSD when it comes to like Marvel crossovers a little. So. I, we'll I, I, I can't i mean it is i get the idea of doing like the crime lords yeah. right in like in new york but 
again, it's it's New York. Like there, there's going to be there should be all these tons of different crossovers, but they're not going to be. There. I feel like you missed opportunities here too with characters like. Like first off, Kingpin has been gone. In fact, we just saw him in the Hellfire Gala. He's on Krakoa right now, or was. So, like, throw out Kingpin. We don't have to have Kingpin. Like, I would put in characters like who hasn't been around in a while is the Hood. Bring in the Hood. Like characters like that. Like, if you're gonna do a street level, I do. I do like the kind of let's what you would maybe call like B level villains in a way, like a Hobgoblin, the Owl, uh, Mister Negative. These are not like top tier bringing it in hammerhead, bringing in Kingpin, who's a top tier villain, doesn't feel like the same. I'd like to see a like, different level of villains in a way. Mm. So. Yeah, like having the owl. I mean, like that's like old school. Yeah, yeah right. Like really old. Yeah. So, well, that's what we got announced from Marvel at SDCC. So cool stuff. Hopefully you found something in there that you liked and you're excited for. Um, but moving on. You want to do the the DC talk that you had? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess we talked about this maybe about a month ago. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the DC super-powered story coming on HBO Max. Well, I say HBO Max, but it's just called Max now. It's a three three episode um, documentary on DC Comics. And I, I got to say, man, the f- it was very informative. Like, there's things that I didn't know. There were things, obviously, that I did know. There's people that they spoke with. There was old interviews, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very mm-hmm. linear. So like the, I'll give you the, the synopsis. Like the first year, obviously, it's or even DC Comics started. And they kind of break it down into each of the characters. So it's like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash is in there, Green Lantern, um, and even like Sergeant Rock. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, right. The second one definitely go, starts, you know, talking about the you know, how they, they changed it. And and, it, and it's really good because obviously they, they break it down by years and like what's going on in America at the time. You know, right, so reflecting society a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, so the second one kind of, you know, that brings in the whole, like not cartoon, but like has the cartoons because it does have like the super friends, but has like the campy Batman. And they talk about it, how it was like campy and how it was like, and the people they talk to, it's awesome because you have this thing where they're like, it was shitty. Like Batman was such a cool character, even in the forties, like when he first got created, he was, not like a badass like he is now, but the way he was was not the way he was supposed to be in the sixties. Mm-hmm. And then you have all like what was going on with you know Vietnam and the Civil War stuff and and like all these protests and how all these characters like changed and how they had how they adopted and how you know comic sales went down and how there was like comic burnings and there's just so much involved, especially in that second episode, you know. And then finally to kind of bring the full thing to a close is obviously. DC kind of getting on the heels of more like the movies and the shows and like the uh, animated movies and cartoon uh, video games and just, just everything like going through the nineties and milestone and, you know, the, the relaunch and, you know, everything that's kind of, it, it goes all the way up until I guess black Adam, um, you know, and I know when we talked about it and we said like, who was going to be on there talking and, you know, yeah. the rock was on there. He's right. literally in like two, he's literally in there for like two scenes. So it's very cool. <laughs> um, but it's really awesome because you get to see these characters, like these writers, like there's times where they talked about like Dark Knight Returns and they have an interview with Frank Miller and it's like Frank, like young Frank Miller. It's not like Frank Miller now. Oh, it's not like coked out Freddy Krueger looking Frank. No, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, and it's just so great to think about, you know, these, what they thought about when they wanted to do this, even like with uh, Tim Burton, like him talking, it was him in like the late eighties talking about the Batman movie. You know, um, Greg Berlanti's in there and, you know, he's big, he's, his whole thing was the Arrowverse. So you have all the different shows and like Smallville too. Yeah. And all that. And just, everything is just very interesting. And, you know, obviously like there's going to be haters on what I, when I say this, but I gotta say like DC really took the reins on a lot of topics and a lot of things, not to say that Marvel didn't, but like you look at their 80 plus year history, you know, people forget, like they took vertigo, right? Like, they did Watchmen and then they yeah. were like, let's create this side company called Vertigo and have like the Sandman and have like Doom Patrol and have all these weird titles by creating yeah. these titles. And then, like I said, and then in the 90s before gave, Marvel's ultimate universe. Yeah. yeah. And then in the 90s, you had like Milestone. They gave this to, you know, four black artist writers to create this, you know, uh, black superhero universe in a way. And, you know, yeah, it only lasted like a few years, but now they've kind of revitalized it. That was and, like Static Shock, Icon. Yeah, um, Black uh, Syndicate, 
uh I, rockets in there Rocket, icon yeah, right, right, right. um but it it's just so interesting to see these characters mm-hmm. and i feel like anybody should watch it just as a comic book person because they they do talk about you know they do talk about you know marvel there's it's not like they're they don't you shit know, on them like but they obviously, there, right? yeah. yeah they don't you know they they do shit on <laughs> they do you know take full effect for like towards the end of episode three of like Zack snyder's justice league right mm-hmm. like okay but and but it's just so awesome throughout the years. Like you see these characters and they evolve and how they create new characters. And you know, obviously we talk about this constantly on on this podcast about how you really need to create new characters and stop using old characters to change things. Like it's yeah. just so amazing to see. Even like I vaguely remember like how Wonder Woman was. Like Wonder Woman, I feel like it was definitely a, a huge part of this. I mean, they're all huge parts of the, the three part episode but the fact that you like you get to see like wonder woman who she was you knew her from like the 40s and 50s and then like she was dying down and then like the 60s came and obviously the groovy hippie era and then like they changed her to be like that and yeah. then they, they brought Carter her back because the tv show and all that yeah. yeah and then they kind of brought her back in like you know the 70s with like linda carter as wonder woman mm-hmm. and they changed her back because like they saw sales were terrible so they were they went back to like the roots and just such an amazing like it's such an amazing documentary and like i watched it and my, it was funny my brother was watching it i said oh have you checked out super powered and i didn't watch it yet he's like i turned it on for 10 minutes and i saw james gunn and how like excited he was for something and he's like i turned it off and then like <laughs> after two episodes in i go bro you really need to start it again even if you don't watch episode one to learn like the history because of course like i feel like we always know the history of these characters right like you know batman how he started right you know yeah oh yeah you know the history but you don't know like why they were written the way they were written yeah that's what what you're talking about yeah yeah and that's what makes this documentary so good is like you really especially these older interviews is perfect because Mm -hmm. like we talk about this like all right they created these characters and then like someone else have an interview more recently and it's just it's more on like what's the agenda right it's more like oh well let's kind of talk about this now but it's like back then when they created these characters and what was going on is just amazing. And I, I loved, I loved every minute of it, to be honest. I wasn't bored. Every time I kept checking, I would actually pause it to see how much time I had left for these episodes. Cause I was like, I want more. Like, I just, I don't want it oh, to cool. end. Like I was like, Oh my God, it's going to be, you know, it's going to cut short at a certain moment, but yeah, so much good stuff. And I, I feel like DC just gets shit on because yeah, they, they did. Um, they haven't been as successful in the movie. No. But so they did they, the yeah. TV, and I learned that DC created like uh, the head publisher at the time, uh, a woman. Like there was times where there was like women as the head publishers, and um, you know, head. I guess uh, I wouldn't say writer, but like they were the ones who adopted the trade paperback, the graphic novel, hmm. because like they were like, well, like obviously, you know, they they would run the issues, and then that's it. They could be they could be put in bookstores. So like obviously Watchmen and they say like, you know, these are these are basically ways that there's always like a residual like it's never out of print. Like they right. just constantly are, are printing it, like whether it's, you know, Sandman, Watchmen, you know, Batman. And then it just goes through all these things and you learn a lot about um, the DC universe and the lore. And I'm like, I kind of want to go back. I kind of want to like start reading some <laughs> older stuff. Yeah, I had actually since we talked about it, I had kind of forgot about it until you just said it before the episode. And now I now I definitely want to watch it. It sounds very, very interesting. And I'm interested in also like it's it, I mean, Marvel and DC, they're so different because DC has been around longer. And so it is to me, I think the thing I find so interesting about the show, but like from what you're saying, is how and of course this is the way it is. This is the way it is now, right now, all the stuff that we bitch about in current comics, but how society what's occurring in society is reflected in comics and vice versa right so like you talk about you know vietnam and they didn't like the hippie stuff because people were probably like sick of that right so like hey go back to the origins or you know keep it campy and lighthearted because people are dying in war like people don't want dark and gritty batman they want maybe goofy campy because it's a little bit more lighthearted and the real world kind of sucks right now you know um and it's also like you have to think about I mean, what's the year? Gosh, I was, when did Action Comics come out? 31? 38. 38? Action Comics number one was 38. So, I mean, you're talking like World War II, bro. So, you're also having like the only comics that are really kind of around like during that time. So, yeah, I'm excited. I I definitely am going to watch that again. I'm glad you reminded 
yeah, it's self and the listener. I mean, I can't wait to rewatch it to be honest. Like, cause I was watching it, like just taking in so much information. And I mean, they have like, obviously they have tons of people who are still alive, you know, like Tom King's in there, James mm-hmm. Gunn, uh, Phil Jimenez, Marv Wolfman. And then you get like the older cats that, like I said, like there's Carmine Inf- Infantino, like obviously yeah. he's, he's dead, but like his old, his old interviews, like I said, with Frank Miller, old interviews, like even Neil Adams, like, it's just so crazy to see like these guys as younger people, like even Stan Lee's in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Stan Lee always so amazing. Old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny when, no, but when you see him, I'm just like, Oh wow, this is Stan Lee. Like even like Neil Adams, like some of these guys, like when you look at them, you're like, Oh my God, like, I mm-hmm. can't believe this is like them. Um, but yeah, it, it's just very interesting to think that there are, I just feel like DC does take more risks and that's, and they do that. They talk about this throughout the entire documentary that, you know, there is risk taking and right. there were times where, you know, kids weren't into comics anymore. Cause obviously there's a thing called the TV. So it's like, how do you adapt? Oh, you make a TV show. And I always thought that like Batman was the first TV show, but it was, you know, the, it was the captain Marvel, the Shazam thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you also had like mm-hmm. the old Superman thing. And then they talk about, well, how do we, how do we get kid people into the movie theaters? And then that's like when, they did Superman and they hate it. They are like, Oh, how can we do this? Obviously, you know, you can't. Yeah. There's just so much. To talk about. I, could, I literally could well. do an entire episode just on this, these, these three episodes. Sorry. I'm going to watch it, dude. I'm definitely going to watch it. So. But yeah, overall, um, whether you don't know anything about DC, I think to be honest, that's probably the best is like, if you're not a big DC fan and you kind of want like a history of the DC universe, this is perfect. Like, I really think this is perfect for newcomers for loyalists to anybody who's been reading it for a while, but that have never read like the really old stuff or see where things came from or why they became in this. I mean, they talk, like I said, they talk about it all and that's the best part. Like they're, they own up to things. They talk about the bombs. They talk about the great things. And, mm-hmm. ah, it's so good. I, I can't wait to watch it again. Sweet. Cool. Well, let's move on to some Marvel talk. So we had the final episode as we're recording came out today with uh, Secret Invasion, episode six, the end of the Secret Invasion miniseries. And we stayed, We, I guess we we tried to, we were going to not do like a mid, mid-season mid review, and then we kind of did. We kind of talked about our thoughts about it really a little bit. But um, in general, I guess, uh, why don't you start us off? What'd you think? So not let me, the, let not me the first, whole thing, yeah. Um, okay, real quick, I got to give a shout out to someone. I just checked my phone and someone, okay. based on my, I'm not going to give the person's name because I don't want to ruin their life, but Someone just put based on my based on my current uh, story on Instagram. Someone said, "Is there a bigger clown currently than Bryce Comics?" <laughs> Sorry, that's just too funny. Well, I want to know who you're talking about. Uh, well, we'll t- I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, I'll tell you later. But anyway, uh, so here's my here's my let me let me I, I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go you know obviously negative into the positive. So negative my positive. biggest okay. problem with this, and this is and Marvel didn't really think this one through should have never shown i know what you're gonna say yeah you yeah. should have never shown the marvel's first trailer with uh fury fury yeah right is that what you're gonna think right? no yeah because i've heard you, you know, we i think we've talked about this before i think we kind of talked about it last week when we yeah I don't, maybe you and i did i get confused so there's but. no and obviously even in the second trailer there's no there was no like there was no thinking that he was going to die, right? There was no right. end consequences. Like you're like, well, I know he's going to whatever however these six episodes go, it's going to be Nick Fury's at the end, right? So that was my that's my biggest gripe about this series. Mm-hmm. Uh I felt that they didn't give Maria Hill's death her yeah, her right? Yeah, like, yeah. I felt more I felt more when like Col- Phil Coulson died in the Avengers, right? His small right. little parts in like all the movies leading up to the Avengers mm-hmm. And then him dying and how he died and him dead, like, was like, oh, shit. Like, and I get how they kind of brought him back in a way on S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Right. But, like, Maria Hill's been the same way. Like, she's been right there in, like, little parts in all these movies and and still in up until, like, these all these phases. And I just felt like it was, like, a quick death. And they were just like, all right, whatever. Yeah. That kind of bothered me. You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, Talos. I felt like his death was like also the same thing. Like that was just kind of like, mm, it was like a meaningless thing. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that though, I, I, I enjoyed the series um, from a series point of view. I definitely enjoyed it. Obviously. Yes. It's not 
like the secret invasion that we've all read if you've read secret invasion because they did stay away from certain things i did like the whole espionage you know spy thriller like they talked about and we've talked about that you know leading up to this that that was this what was it going to be right obviously the main things the main takeaways was um you know and i guess we'll kind of you know we'll get into this with you as well like you know finding out that roadie's a scroll mm-hmm. which has been mm-hmm. you know the talk of the town you know who could be a scroll and then at the very end we get to find out that uh agent ross it, there's also a scroll out there so now you're like thinking well when did this happen right yeah and and it's and it's kind well, of no, we knew ross in episode one when he got killed yes we knew he was a scroll yeah so he was like when like scroll. when did right, he get the when yeah yeah of course so uh, you know overall i i would probably give the show like an eight um it's not bad i think they did a great job i think it makes you know, and I've spoken about this. I feel like I did speak about this at the mid season when we briefly talked about this. That really makes Captain Marvel movie good, right? It makes it better. Actually, that's what I should say better. And I I liked it in general. So I can't say it just makes it much better. Much better is a word. Yeah. Uh much better. <laughs> and then I feel like this is also then leading into the the Marvels because the Kree are there and they do mention the Kree at the end of this show mm-hmm. briefly. So I do see like um something at least forming that's okay. what i'll say right that's so we look at it without going through and ranking them one by one yeah. <clears throat> out of all the disney plus shows where does this fall and let's do it three brackets top top bracket middle bracket bottom bracket i would probably put this in the top bottom of the top middle of the top top of the top probably middle yeah in the middle Okay, and then yeah. for reference, what's top of the top? Well, top of the top is always Hawkeye. <laughs> okay, Hawkeye okay. never coming down off the okay. top of the top. But then for reference, what's bottom of the bottom? Oh, bottom of the bottom or bottom yeah. of the top? Bottom of the bottom. What's oh, the bottom of the bottom? Oh god! So we have gotta have a ranking system. So yeah, I know, I know. Points. All right, so bottom of the they know where you fall. God, bottom of the bottom. So wait, does what if count or no? No. no. Okay, we're not gonna count what if live All action. Right. Yeah. All right, so bottom of the bottom is. <laughs> It's gotta be the gritty, the nitty gritty on the Comic Con podcast. Oh God, yeah, uh, it's got to be one division for me. Okay. It's the bottom of the bottom. Okay, okay, cool. But, so my yeah, opinion, you know, like I, you go oh, in, you know, obviously, yeah, like it's that's that's all I got. It's you know, we'll kind of get a little bit more after I hear what your thoughts are. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of mirroring a lot of your thoughts. I definitely, I think the, um, <clears throat> I think they did uh, the character Maria Hill a disservice in we just never really got a lot of Maria Hill and all the iterations of her. You never really got, she was a a very one dimensional character. And so in a way, I guess I'm like, I really didn't think about it until you just said it in a way. I kind of understand why her death wasn't more climactic. um, Cause in a way her character really wasn't. Um, We never got any depth to her character. She was basically just fury second in command. And that's really it. But her death, I don't feel like her death, of course, people might disagree with me. I don't feel like her death moved the plot of the story too much. And so in a way, it makes me feel like the writers just wrote her out because like, hey, look, what are we going to do? Keep paying this chick for like not really doing much in terms of storyline. But like, I know it was like, oh, you'll be blamed for the death of Maria Hill. Like this Nick Fury, you think he gives a shit about that? <laughs> like, I mean, this guy's got bigger fish, bigger problems than being de- blamed for the death of a, a spot, yeah. you know? So that just didn't really hold weight as like a, a storyline for me. Um, I, the Taylor stuff I thought was pretty good because they beefed his character up a lot. And then his death was a pretty big deal. So I actually enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed all the super scroll stuff, but like I complained about before I, I want the real super scroll. And so I always hate it when you get watered down version first. And then it's like, so it's like version, you know, 1.0, we're going to get version 2.0, which is going to be the real one. I also dislike the fact that we didn't use any really named scrolls from the comics. Like you had obviously, you know, super scroll clerk, you got Pybok, you had a lot of options, Veronki, you know, big name scrolls in a show that are we ever going to get uh, another scroll centric Marvel property? Maybe not outside of possibly fantastic four. So like, I felt like you could have set up some scroll characters that would play in like something even like you did with Gaia from Captain Marvel, right? Like a young clerk somewhere in here would have been badass or like a young Pybok or Veronki's name mentioned is like, I mean, obviously we got Dork, the the emperor mentioned as well. And there's like a whole other group of scrolls somewhere else. And so they could be there. 
Um, but I do think in, all in all, I mean, it was a good show. I liked the spy espionage aspect of it. Um, it didn't really feel like it had a lot of importance to it. And then obviously one of the biggest questions, like you mentioned, is when were Rhodey and Ross uh, infiltrated, so to speak, or replaced? And so like last we saw Ross was in Black Panther. Well, was that a scroll or was that the real Ross? Kind of wouldn't make sense for it to be a scroll, right? Because he had like legitimate personal relationships with people during that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he got replaced afterwards. It's um, weird. The one thing regarding Rhodey and, and yeah, people yeah, kind of yeah. talk about. So like when they when they pull them from those pods, mm-hmm. Rhodey's in a gown. So what? Like a oh yeah yeah he was, he was in that like nurse gown thing. Like a nurse gown, yeah. yeah. So that makes people think like oh he got taken during Civil War when he crashed, right? So like he. Okay. He fell fighting, you know, when the, when all of them were fighting and he was taken at that point. And basically, yeah, they like he couldn't use his legs. And I can see post Civil War, there are times where it's def- it definitely is not him. Right. Like, you know, like when he's like they talk about time travel and they're like, well, why can't we go back to uh, to when Thanos was a baby? And, you know, and uh, kind of like, you know, clip his throat type of thing, yeah. you know, like when he's like, eh. and but then there's also times where I'm like. Well, then, the, the, then during Endgame, like when he has a conversation with like Tony, like it's very sentimental. I feel like everything had to happen post snap. It just to me, it wouldn't make sense if any of these guys got replaced pre snap. Because but now here's the thing, snap. too, is like okay. if it happened pre snap, he doesn't know that Tony's dead. And now this right, kind of sets up armor wars. It, if it's well, if that is true. Very true. It could. That's a good point. That's I mean, the but, only thing that I can think of. Coming out of here, Brody's gonna be pissed regardless, right? He's gonna be well, happy. Yeah. He's been replaced. So anything could happen with Armor Wars, but it just you look back and it doesn't it doesn't make sense that it would have been a scroll that had their own. Because then the other thing is too, you have to think about when did Gravik take control? Because that's probably when these people were replaced. Because Gravik had this whole mission in 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 mind. Mm. So it can't be that long ago. It really can't be pre-snap. And even during the blip, like why didn't the scrolls take over then? I guess like, probably because they got blipped too. I mean, a, a, a good chunk of them had to have got blipped. Everyone did. Yeah, you would think, but right. still, like, then what was going on, like, during those yeah. five years? Like, the, that's the that's obviously. I know we, I know, like, the movies that happened like just after, like, Spider Man, not mm-hmm. so much Doctor Strange, but like Spider Man, Hawkeye, um, Black Widow. Yes, no. no. Did Black Widow talk about it. The blip, yeah, no, because that was a prequel. Does. Yeah, but it. Yeah, I guess it does. Oh yeah, it does. Does it? So yeah, I mean, there's times where you're like, um, when are, are we ever going to talk about certain things? I mean, are we like, are we too yeah. far past like the blip, right? Are we too I, far past that, or is it still like enough yeah. where they still should like figure out like where these people were, or they just don't know what they're doing and they just let it go? I feel like the blip was a good idea in terms of like the in-game storyline and everything, but it causes a lot of problems moving forward. And I feel like Marvel just kind of was like, okay, let's just not talk about the blip too much. You know, <laughs> like, as soon as you start to talk about it too much, it kind of unravels things. Yeah. But, like, yes, they talk about it here because like they talk about Fury and his, him yeah. and his wife, but you're just like, there should be other things that like, there should be more centric things. Like, mm-hmm. Why didn't certain powers like come up? Right. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, the also, best thing, and real quick, let me just kind of yeah, go yeah, back to, yeah. to my thing, and I know you'll you'll t- agree, maybe you'll agree on this. It's like the CGI fight at the end between, and obviously we're all spoilers here, so I'm sorry, mm-hmm. folks. But between Emily Clark's character and and Gravik, CGI was probably the best that I've yeah. seen on a Disney awesome. Plus show, and probably even clo- as good as it is in a movie, fighting wise, it just is a little strange that they are there's now like a super scroll out there with superpowers like this. Yeah. So, and I think my, my final two, like kind of complaints on the show is Amelia Clark's character is different. Like maybe, maybe we'll get called out on this. We always complain about, well, make new characters, you know, but I'm talking about in the comics and the movies, I expect to see old characters because we never saw them before. Right. So guy as a, as a new character is kind of like, I didn't really need you to create a new scroll. There's been scrolls I would have liked to have seen. So now we've got a super scrolling Gaia around. We had Gravik as well. Her character, I just don't know. And she's such a big actress. It's like, what are we going to do with her moving forward? Mm. And then, honestly, Fury's arc 
kind of bullshit because in a way, wasn't his whole start of his arc was like, hey, look, this loser left after the blip because he couldn't handle it, went to Saber. Now he's back. Guess what? He's going back to Saber. Like, I just kind of like, dude, what's going on here, man? Like, I don't know. We'll see. They should have, I really would have thought instead of having um, Rhodey as a scroll, I really would have, I would have loved to see him to be uh, Agent 13, Darren Carter. It would have explained her character, like the, the yes. turn of the bad side. That would have been a and little that's bit not to say that she's not one, right? Yeah, it's there's not to not say to we say don't that... know who is who's still out there, right? Like maybe mm -hmm. there's other new scrolluses. I guess we're kind of assuming that was the only place, but we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. So cool. Well, that was Secret Invasion recap, courtesy of the Comic Con podcast. So anyway, we are kind of getting to the end of the show here. We're gonna go ahead and end as we always do with what we're currently reading. Justin, you wanna lead it off? You can't talk yeah, about I'll, I'll talk about what I read this week. Uh, nothing. <laughs> well, so I do want you to talk about something. Let's, Ooh, let's have a conversation between oh. you and I about this. Because Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I apologize, people. It's been a very busy week. Um, I was also sick, and obviously, recording this early, just preparing for Terrificon. I did yeah. not go to the LCS to grab any books. I can't read anything, so I'll have a lot to talk about next week. What do you... I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I honestly am behind now, I think, on two weeks of um, Night Terrors. Mm -hmm. And I'm not entirely sure I want to keep going. Um, maybe just the main storyline. I didn't read last week's. And I know you did read last week's uh, Night Terrors because you mentioned it. Um, yes. I think we mentioned it a little bit. Overall, your opinion of Night Terrors? You so, haven't read number two, I think just came out this yeah, week. Yeah, so number two came out this week. Like I said last week, you know, there's some good, there's still some good issues. Like the Zatanna one is good. It just, it introduces characters that, you didn't see yet so maybe they show up in this issue but yeah. i feel like that's something that they should have done in the last issue um i don't really know how i feel as far as i mean the storyline's cool because again it's they they talked about it and they said it like it's going to be more of like dead man and, and magic yeah like Zatanna. So, okay i'm perfect i'm fine with that because that's realistically like what it's all been about so i like the whole idea of insomnia you know looking for something that's hidden in one of the minds of villain or superhero like they're still you know talking about that so i think it's i think it's perfect like i think it's a good storyline so far do i think of any outlasting outcome probably not you know no change in the status quo yeah but that's not to say that we might not get something else so i mean I'm i don't know it's it's tough to say right now i'm gonna try to read it the i'm gonna try to catch up on it but i mean it, the problem is also like i'm a backlog now, like two weeks of those one shots where it's kind of like, yeah, so I, I don't know if I'm going to be picky. There are some I'm interested in. Like I do like, I want to read the one that came up this week is angel breaker. Cause that's like a new yep. character mm -hmm. that's, you know, from shadow war that just kind of came out in, like last year. So I think it's kind of interesting. She gets her own one shot. Um, there's a few of them. I'm probably going to pass Harley Quinn. I'll, I'll open it and I'll look, but I hate Harley Quinn. So I'm probably just getting past that one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I got. I'm, I'm behind. If I get some free time, which I don't have a lot of these days, I might try to say. burn through some of them. But so, I guess I'd like to talk about a few books. I've got two honorable mentions. Um, one of these, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Um, this it just ended today. The new or yeah, the new issue just came out this week and ended. It's the seasons have teeth number four. Um, I talked about it by Dan Waters. Really cool little four issue series from Boom Studios. Um, very heartfelt, something different, um, kind of a cool idea and a story. And then the story wraps up kind of different and the ending is pretty cool. Um, I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for something a little different, like I said, not your superheroes and short and sweet. Uh, the Seasons Have Teeth, one through four, great read. Check that out. Um, another honorable mention is The Night Club, number six. And this is the last issue of I what I think is to be just the first arc of Mark Miller's um, six issue vampire storyline, which is, which is pretty cool. It's basically like, what if you're a kid and you receive vampire powers, which <laughs> if you're a kid, you probably always want to be a vampire. Right. So, um, it was cool. It's classic Mark Miller violence, um, gore, cool story. Really enjoyed it. Check that out as well. Six issues there from image. Um, but hands down pick of the week, no argument for me is, X-Men Hellfire Gala number one. So we always know the Hellfire Gala, big things happen in the X-Men universe when that comes out. And this week was no different. So this is the start of the fall of X. We've had a couple like preview 
prequel type issues, but this is really the fall of X. And I don't want to ruin or tell you anything if you haven't picked this issue up. Some crazy stuff happens in this issue. Um, the status quo of what we've been with the Hickman era is, I don't want to say done, but it has changed for sure. We don't know what's going to come back, what's going to stay. Um, Apocalypse is looming in other storylines, the war with Apocalypse and everything. And then now have like Orkies and, and the fall of X and everything. It's crazy. So um, I will say if I'm instructing you on the read stuff that you haven't, you need to probably check out the free comic book day, uncanny Avengers. Um, that's going to be a play a part in this. So you kind of understand what's going on. Some of the prequel stuff uh, sins of sinister kind of play a big role in this as well, but man, hellfire gala. Awesome. And side note with SDCC, I thought it was really cool. They did like an X-Men hellfire gala, like um party and kind of yeah, like it was run, really awesome, runway man. thing. That was pretty cool, man. Uh cosplays were like, pretty badass. They, they were, were like matched up to a lot of the characters. It was, sick, was really dude. awesome. I'm always impressed by cosplay because I am not creative, dude. I couldn't I'd be looking like the cosplay guy from uh what's a Halloween party city or party city, like <laughs> just like toy crappy <laughs> costume. That'd be me. Um and then one last thing I actually I should have mentioned in SD when we were talking comic book talk in SDCC and a little notification for people moving forward. I didn't know this. Maybe this is dumb me. But as you guys know, I've talked a lot about the massive verse. I'm a big Radiant Black fan. We know there was a vote not too long ago about in issue 25. Radiant Black was you got to choose who was going to be the, the character Radiant Black moving forward. We found out, or at least I found out at SDCC, that something kind of weird's happening. It's first kind of pissed me off. And then I kind of thought about it and it was really, I kind of liked the idea, but in issues 25 through 30, you're going to have cover A's and cover B's cover A is going to be one guy being radiant black cover B is the other guy as radiant black. Now, I don't know if I haven't read the cover B version of radiant black 25, and I don't want to say anything about it, spoil anything. I don't know how different the stories are. Obviously the two characters are very different. So I don't know if the writing is, it's just the, the, the person different but when you look at the covers like you'll see cover a is one guy i'm like you know face into the right mm -hmm. and cover b is almost like a mirror image of radiant black face in the other way so initially i was pissed i was like so what i got like <laughs> two issues of each thing right but there you go this Who's is it gonna kind of, be it's kind of also something that like has never really been done before um so i like the idea it's only five issues of it and supposedly at the end of 30 at the cat the end of this catalyst war that's occurring you'll find out who will be radiant black moving forward permanently, I guess we'll see. But um, so for those of you who are reading radiant black and you want to, you probably should pick up cover A's cover B's for the next, you know, couple uh weeks. And I just went to my comic book shop and even the guy there was like, dude, I didn't even know. They didn't let me know. He's like, so now I got to go back and try to buy cover B's for people so they can have them. And so, yeah. So hunt down those covers A's and those cover B's for radiant black for the full story. But there you go. That's kind of a cool idea, right? You know, for I sure like it. Yeah, it's time. smart. It's it's smart. Like I'm sure someone else, someone else will, will take that. Like as far as like when they do new heroes, right? Like whatever it is. I, I feel like even like X Men could X Men should kind of do that. Like obviously with the X Men Gala, like leading up to it, like all the characters that you could vote for should be on like a cover. Yeah. And then the following month, like one of those characters would have like the B cover or the main cover. You know, mm -hmm. like that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, so I don't want to spoil it, but when in the gala, the new X team gets voted on and then it's a very short lived X team. So um, could have had potential. We'll see what happens. But anyway, so that's all we've got this week. Thanks for tuning in. Um, next week will be a lot of terrific on talk. I'm sure hear all the stories from Justin. Follow him on social media this weekend for sure, because he will be active. Where else will you be doing this weekend? Um, drinking, riding a bull and buying comics. And whatnot, though, right? You'll be having a lot of whatnot, and whatnot at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to try to do some whatnot. So I'll be, uh, I got the camera set up. Uh, probably going to have the, the the Canadians who I'm staying with. I told Gross. them to bring some books. You know, maybe we'll run some whatnot stuff off of that as well. But yeah, uh, next week we're going to try to have a guest, someone who was at Terrificon. If not, um, maybe somebody else. So we could talk San Diego. So yeah, yeah that's it. Cool, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a safe week, safe weekend, and we will see you again later. Peace.